we need to understand what makes an airplane fly. In order to understand what makes it fly, we have to understand the theories of lift. The first one is Bernoulli's principle, and the second one is Newton's law. Bernoulli discovered that if we have an increase in velocity, it creates a negative pressure above the wing and underneath the wing, in contrast, it is a positive pressure. Newton's theory has to do with the fact that when we pitch the airplane up, the wind strikes from underneath and bounces down and pushes our wing up. Let's look at this in a little more detail. If we look at how the airflow uh, travels beneath and above the wing, the air that passes underneath the wing, there's no resistance, so it passes very smoothly. A foot or two above the wing, the wind also passes with little resistance. But very close to the leading edge of the wing, the air molecules tend to get uh, bunched up or crowded because it's a smaller area for those air molecules to fit through and therefore they have to travel faster above the wing than below the wing because there's still more air molecules here pushing those than these molecules have to hurry up or increase their speed to get across the top of the wing. And what Bernoulli realized was that if you have an increase in velocity, you have a decrease in pressure. You may have seen this before uh, when you watch a river or a creek, wherever the river or creek narrows, the water tends to rush faster. And so Bernoulli realized that that creates a negative pressure so if we have a negative pressure uh, above the wing, in contrast, we would have a positive pressure beneath the wing. So the negative pressure basically creates a, a suction or a lifting force, and also the positive pressure tries to refill that void, and that creates lift. So the faster we go, the more difference in pressure is created, and the more lift is, is your result. Now Newton's theory, uh, what Newton's theory was, or is, is that the uh, wind strikes underneath the wing, and for every reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So the, the wind strikes there and then it bounces down. So for the, the air deflecting downward off of the wing, the opposite reaction would be for the wing to lift up. So we can also generate lift uh, once we're using Bernoulli's principle to get our airspeed going. We can increase lift also by increasing the back pressure on our elevator and it causes the airplane to pitch up and the wind will strike underneath bounce off and the result would be the wing would go up. So we can uh, make the plane go higher two different ways, either increase our airspeed or increase our back pressure. We can only increase our back pressure just so much because we have to look at a few terms and we have to understand what angle of attack is and how we could exceed the angle of attack or the critical angle of attack. So a few terms that we have to learn is this is the leading edge of the wing, and this would be the trailing edge of the wing. If we drew an imaginary line from the leading edge to the trailing edge, we call that the cord line. There's also another term called wing camber, but that has to do with uh, the actual curvature of the wing. So don't confuse camber with cord line. Camber is when we completely uh, bisect the wing in half and it shows the curvature of the wing, and cord line is just simply a line drawn from the leading edge to the trailing edge of the wing. The next term is relative wind. Relative wind is the wind opposite the airplane's flight path. So relative wind is the wind opposite the airplane's flight path. So therefore, if the airplane were flying straight and level, the wind opposite would be here. If I increase my airspeed and the airplane just started to rise or lift like this, my relative wind would be from here. If I reduced the power but can't maintained my same pitch and the airplane started to descend like this, but I did not change where my nose was pitched, I only allowed the airplane to kind of sink or settle down, then the relative wind would be coming from here. So just to clarify, the relative wind, which is very important to understand, is opposite the aircraft's flight path. If I were to pitch the airplane up, and do a tail slide, the relative wind would be from behind the aircraft. So relative wind is opposite the aircraft's flight path. When we look at the angle between the cord line and the relative wind, that angle we call angle of attack. It is the way the wing is attacking the wind. So angle of attack, often you'll see it abbreviated as AO, oops, sorry, as AOA, angle of attack. Um, the angle of attack can only go up to about 18 to 20 degrees in almost every single aircraft. As soon as the relative wind and the cord line create an angle greater than about 18 to 20 degrees, the airplane will stall. 
That doesn't mean the engine shuts off, it just simply means that the wing can no longer produce lift. Normally the airflow uh, stays tightly to the top of the wing. So as you're flying, the wind passes like this above the wing. But if we continue to increase the uh, angle of attack, what happens is the airflow will begin to separate from the wing. So if we pitch the airplane up too high, the airflow cannot stay attached to the wing and it starts to separate or burple away from the wing and that will reduce our lift until suddenly it can't lift at all. Now hopefully you've properly loaded your airplane nose heavy so the nose will drop and as soon as the nose drops the wing would lower of course and you would decrease that critical angle of attack and the, the wind would reattach itself to the wing and then you're suddenly flying again. So we can only pitch the airplane up a certain amount before we've reached our critical angle of attack. Now when we stall the airplane, whether on purpose or accident, um, the, the airspeed at which the airplane stalls can vary. The thing that makes the airplane stall is always exceeding that critical angle of attack. Now let's look at a couple scenarios where we could be at a higher speed but the airplane may still stall. If you, for example, dove the airplane down and you suddenly pull the aircraft up, let's look at where the relative wind is and it, the relative wind in relation to our cord line. If you dive the airplane down, the relative wind would be coming from this angle. If you suddenly pull up, the momentum of the airplane continues downward before it starts to round out and start to climb. So if the relative wind is here initially and you start to increase your pitch attitude, the momentum still carries down, look at this angle of attack we have. So we could have been going 100, 110 for example, and suddenly pitch up but stall the airplane. Another way you could stall the airplane is at a higher airspeed would be if we bank the airplane and pull back aggressively because as we pull back aggressively that airplane is kind of uh, sliding through the air like this and that therefore the relative wind would come from this angle and again that is a very steep angle and it would probably exceed your critical angle causing the airplane to stall. So the airplane can stall at really any airspeed and uh, it's also indifferent to uh, the density of the air, if you're up high or you're down low, or it's a hot day or it's a warm day. The only reason the airplane will stall is if you exceed that critical angle of attack. So in order to recover from a stall, we would need to decrease our angle of attack to allow the wind to reattach to our wing, and then we can fly again. And one more thing I want to point out is about how we can change our angle of attack. So far, I've said if we pitch the airplane up, we're increasing our angle of attack. But there's something else that we can do that changes our angle of attack without even changing the pitch of the airplane. Because remember, by definition, angle of attack is the difference between my cord line and the relative wind. So what would happen if we lower the flaps or the ailerons? Remember, the ailerons are here and the flaps are here. If we lower the ailerons or the flaps, we're basically extending the trailing edge of the wing to a downward position. And remember by definition, cord line was the difference between, or a line drawn from the leading edge to the trailing edge. So now I would have to redraw my line. And if the wind was still coming from the same direction, for example, I would just have increased that angle just simply by introducing the flaps or lowering the aileron on uh, one wing. 